Let's continue with our design of the engine block in Onshape. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, I was going to rename my features in order to make the tree of features easier to understand. Another thing that you can do to make it easier and more user friendly is to organize your features into folders. So for example, I have all these features related to the mounting flanges. I can right click after selecting them and then add the selection to a folder. I will call this folder mounting flanges. Hit the check mark and that way it collapses them in here. I'll do that later on with some of the other different features. But for now, for what I'm going to do next, it'll help if I don't have all these fins visible in the model for what I'm going to create next. So let's select the cooling fin pattern, right click and choose suppress. And it still leaves the original feature in there. Hey, no problem. We can suppress that one as well. You can see how the suppression is indicated with a strike through the name of the feature. Let's see for next. Oh, let's hide the sketch that it automatically made visible again. And now for the next steps, I am going to create, let's see, we're going to make an exhaust mount over on the side. We'll make a carburetor mount and then we'll do some tabs on the back of the model, then some fillets and some holes. So first off, let's go about creating a plane that will facilitate the creation of the exhaust mount over on the side of the model here. Let me hit the P on the keyboard to bring back the display of my planes. And I'm going to create a plane offset from the datum plane top. Let's hit the plane tool. It's automatically set to offset. I will select the plane called top and the distance that I want to use is going to be 185. Hit the enter key. There we can see the plane that I want. Let's hit the check mark. And for what I'm doing next, let's see, I do not need to see the draft split plane. I do not need to see the cooling fin plane. Let me hide a couple of those. The feature that I'm going to create will be an extrude coming from this datum plane. So let's select the datum plane and then I can right mouse click and choose new sketch. And let's right click again, view normal to the sketch. And the shape for this one is going to be a basically a, a racetrack kind of shape. So I'm going to sketch in a couple circles. Oops, I don't know what I did there. I'm going to sketch in a couple of circles and circle about over here and then let's create a circle about over here and let's make them equal diameter and then we can put in a diameter dimension and the diameter of both of these is going to be 45 let me make sure that they are in line with one another and also make sure that they are coincident with that plane. That's good and I need to have a dimension from this plane so let's put in those dimensions. They're actually going to be different from each other. This dimension is going to be a value of 100 and the dimension from here to, there we go. This one's going to be oh, almost exactly on 105. And let's create in some horizontal lines to connect them. And be aware that there is a keyboard shortcut for lines. It's just the letter L, but I always just do it manually. Let me hit the escape key and the lines are in blue and I can tell that I don't have them located tangent to each other. So let's put in some tangency constraints and that took care of that one. There we go. Everything looks good. 
you'll notice that I'm not going to do anything regarding trimming the sketch because that's just not necessary. We can use a sketch with multiple overlapping entities. Let's hit the check mark. Let me hit the P to turn off the display of my planes real quick. Let's create an extrude and I'll select my different sections. Let's flip the direction and it might be easiest to just rotate the model to grab that other part of the profile. Let's drag this out a distance and the total distance for this particular feature, let's use a depth of 95. That looks good for the mount. Let's hit the check mark for that particular one. Now the problem is because I created that on the datum plane right, it's going to block this main hole that the piston is going to go through. That's obviously not going to work. So let's grab this bore cut hole and I can drag it down by reordering it to appear after the extrude. Hey, we no longer have any problem with the feature that we created. Let's see, for the next thing, we need to have some mounting holes. So let's go to the hole tool and simple. Let's see, I want these to be through and we can have a custom. That, that will use way too big. And for locating them, let's use one of my favorite things is using the ability to gr grab those mate connectors that automatically exist in the geometry. Let's hit the check mark. So our mounting holes look good. And then I need a cut in here so that the gases can actually go out. Let me hit the P key real quick. And I'm going to select that plane for defining it in order to make a sketch on the plane. Right mouse click, new sketch. And let me orient it approximately before I go to view normal to the sketch. And the sketch that I'm going to make, I want to have, oops, accidentally rotated. Just trying to adjust it. Let me right click and view normal to sketch again. There we go. Should put in a center line, a horizontal center line. Actually, probably also a vertical one. So let's go into there and make it about so. Let me all right. Let me throw in a coincident to just make sure that this is on this. It is, and we go to a translucent display. I want to make sure that it's right on that plane in the middle. So let's, there we go. Now we have everything in black. Let's then go back to a shaded mode. I'm going to jump back and forth between there. All right, so the shape that I want, I want to have a line i'm i want to be on this but i think it's a little easier if i sketch the line a little bit off from it let me hit the escape key let's put in some symmetry pick the construction line pick the two vertices and let's put in a dimension i want this to be a value of 150 and we can put in our coincident and just sometimes it's helpful to sketch off of the geometry because even now it's hard to see the line on top of the existing geometry. Um, let's go with another one. And it's going to be vertical. And let me hit the escape key. And let's make sure that we have the endpoints coincident on the circle. So coincident, grab an endpoint and then circle, endpoint and then circle. Again, I should have exaggerated, would have made it easier. And let's put in some arcs. Let me go to the drop down. Let's do 
a three-point arc. So we'll click the start and then the end. And where the heck is okay? There I can see the end point of the arc. It's giving me a dimension over here. Let's hit the escape key. And for simplicity, let's go back to the coincident constraint. I'm going to pick this to lie on this edge and adjust it. So now this is black. I don't need any other additional dimensions. Let's go to the mirror tool and I'm going to select the entity to mirror about, the entity I want to mirror, and everything looks good. Let's now hit the check mark to complete the sketch. I'm going to extrude this as a cut. Select the profile. Right now it's set to add material. Let's remove material. Let's change the depth to symmetric. And I am going to use a depth of 30. There we go. That looks wonderful. Let's hit the check mark. And so now everything for the carb mount, or excuse me, for the exhaust mount is completed. Now I can work on the carb mount. And the carb mount is going to be up over here. And for sketching, I need to sketch at an angle. So I need some geometry that exists. And for the most part, in on shape, you don't need axes. In this particular case, I do want to have an axis, but one does not exist. So in lieu of having an axis, sometimes you can create a sketch just with some reference geometry. Let me start off by creating a plane for reference. Let's create a plane, and it will be offset from the center plane over here. Let me drag this out. And it's going to end up being a distance of, ooh, going too far, 140. Now I can hit the check mark, select the new plane, right mouse click, and create a new sketch. And let's view normal to the sketch plane. Let's create a construction line. Make it horizontal, hit the escape key, or you could right mouse click and escape from line creation from there. And let's put in a dimension because I want this to be located from that plane, a height of 65. And so that's all that's going to be in this sketch, just some reference geometry that will facilitate constructing a plane at an angle. So for the plane at an angle, let's click on the plane tool. And instead of using offset, you can see that we have multiple different options. It's going to be at a line and an angle. You can pick the entities in any order. I'm going to pick the line and then we can pick the datum plane called top for the angle and oh, going the wrong way. There we go. I want to angle this way and let's use an angle of 22 degrees and hit the check mark and so for this one it might be helpful right now even if I just rename it while I'm working instead of calling this just plane 3 let's call this the carb mount plane You notice that's sort of like upside down, but that's okay. Really don't care about that. Uh, while I'm working on this, let me go back and take a look at some of my other different planes and hide them. And cooling fin plane. Just trying to keep my screen relatively easy to read. All right, so now that I have those different entities, Let's select the carb mount plane, right mouse click, new sketch, and let me zoom in. By the way, if you see me orienting the model incorrectly, I've just been using Creo Parametric for way too many years, and sometimes I mess up reorienting. Let's view normal to the sketch plane, and for the shape of the geometry, let me see if I can go to translucent for a moment 
if that will help. I am going to create a rounded square. So let's go to the rectangle dropdown and I'm going to create a center point rectangle. And yep, that's good at snapping in. Let's snap into the intersection. And there is my square. Let me put in some fillets first. Let's do a fillet there, 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 and there. And the radius of these is going to be a value of 15. Then I can throw in an equal constraint. Let's make this and this equal. That'll turn it into a square. And let me escape out of the equal constraint. Zoom in a little bit. Let's grab this and just move it a little out of the way. And create our dimension from here to there. Locate it over here. And this is going to be a value of 72.5. There we go. And since I added all those different constraints, this one dimension ended up making everything else be fully constrained. Let me go back to a shaded mode. Actually, no, let me stay here for a moment. And also, I'm going to need a hole in here going later. And so I might as well just sketch that in right now because, again, we can have multiple different entities in a single sketch. Let's drag it out and then throw in a dimension for the diameter and make that a value of 50. So that is good. Let's hit the check mark. Now I will go back to my shaded mode. And so the shape of the extrude, let's just grab this portion and for the depth in the first direction, let's go up to next. And then I'm going to define a second end position. And this is going to be blind and value of 25. I like that one. Let's hit the check mark. And so there we have the carb mount, but we need to end up going through this cylindrical surface. Let me bring back this sketch and that way I can grab, I can go to extrude and just grab the circle. And there we have it going downwards. Right now it's adding material. Let's remove material. Part one is still the merge scope. And for the depth, I'm going to change this from blind to up to face and then select the inside cylindrical surface. Oh, let's flip the direction. There we go. It was giving me an error, and I was like, what the heck is going wrong? And then I noticed that the extrude was defined as going upwards. All right, so that is good for some of the entities on the carb mount. Let's see, the next thing I need is going to be a hole going through the side of the model here. And just, just to confirm what I'm doing, let me turn off the display of this plane to unclutter things. No longer need sketch four, but again, just to keep everything organized. Let's call this the carb mount sketch. And carb mount extrude. And the carb mount cut. And I'll just call this. Oops, that's not the new folder. Let me rename this one. I'll just say that this is just some construction geom sketch. Now I need a hole going through the side here located right on this axis. So let's create a new sketch on this side surface. I just need a point for locating the hole. Let me just drop it on there and then do a coincident between the two entities. Try that again. 
didn't like it. Let me try undoing. Let me view normal to the sketch plane. And let's drop in a point. There it goes, snap right into it. Hit the check mark. Now I can create a hole. I'll pick that particular point. And that's a good diameter. It is got the location that I want, the correct merge scope, the correct depth going through everything. Let's hit the check mark. And let's make sure that anything I don't need to see is hidden. All right. So that is good for the carb mount. The next set of major features, I need to have some mounting tabs over on the back surface. I don't think I need my planes. Let's turn them off using the keyboard shortcut of P. Now I will create a new sketch on this surface. And let me view normal to the sketch. I'm going to create some construction geometry. Let's create a line at 45 degrees. Going about over here is good. Let me escape out of there. Turn on the plane display quickly just so I can create my dimension from here to there. 45 degrees. And then I need to have a circle, and the circle will be located right on that construction line, about yay big. I am going to make this with a, let's see, let's dimension it, and the dimension from here to there. Let me locate all the way over here just to get it off of the part geometry. Let's make that a value of 100. Let's make this a value of 30. And now I need to have some tangent lines coming down to intersect with the part. Let's click on the line tool and pick this and have it snap into there. Let me hit escape, hit L. Another line going from here to there. Hit the escape. Now let's make sure that these are symmetric. So we can go to the symmetric, symmetric, and pick this endpoint and this endpoint. And let's go to our tangent. Make sure that this and this are tangent. This and this are tangent. And let's throw in a dimension for the angle between the lines. And that's going to be a value of 40 degrees. So my sketch for the mounting tabs looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I'm going to extrude those different entities. Let's go to extrude. And there and there. It's going the wrong direction. Let's flip the direction. And the depth for this one, let's change it to 15. Let me turn off my plane display using the keyboard. Oops, what did I hit there? I accidentally changed the depth. Let me hit 15, hit the check mark. Now I'll hit the P key while I don't have some field active. So that looks pretty good so far. Let's throw in a hole going through this surface for mounting. Simple hole. Let's use the mate connector and let it snap right to the center of that tab. 15 through. That looks good. Hit the check mark. Now I need to have some fillets on here. Let's go to the fillet tool and I'll pick this edge. It automatically propagates to the tangent references. And this one, a little big right now, let's change that to 2.5. And then hit the check mark. Now I'm going to create another fillet and pick this edge. 
and this one will be a nice value of 5. And so there, that looks pretty good for the mounting tab. And once again, we can just want to see where the features are. So I've got this feature, and I'm going to hold down the shift key to this feature, right click, add the selection to a folder, and I'll call this one my mounting tab, and just to organize it. Now, unfortunately, I'm, I need to create a circular pattern of these different entities, and I can't pick them just from the folder, but it's not that big a deal. Let's create a circular pattern of these, and let's change from part pattern to feature pattern. The features I want to pattern. Again, if I try to pick the folder, it doesn't work. Hey, no problem. Let's just pick the features inside of there. Then let's click in the field in order to pick the axis we want to pattern about. And I can just pick a cylindrical surface. Right now it's creating four of them located 360 degrees. But we're having an issue here. You can see that everything is in red. And a lot of times when this happens with a pattern, just check the box to apply per instance. And I'll try to do some calculation. Let's see if this works. Let's try to edit this one. Maybe remove the sketch. There we go. There's no point to pattern the sketch as well. Now that looks good for the mounting tabs. All right, just a few other features to create. Let's throw in some more fillets. So let's grab this edge and give me a value of five. That's good. Let's grab this edge and the edge going around here and that connecting edge value of five is good let me then put in another fillet and i'll grab this edge let's make it a little smaller and hit the check mark and the last thing i need to do is create some mounting holes up at the top and so I need some points to locate the holes. And I'll just create one hole and then pattern it. So let's create a sketch on this surface. And let's reorient. Let's view normal to the sketch plane. And let me then turn on front to a translucent display. Let me turn on the plane display. And just doing that so I can create a construction circle. And let it snap right into the center there. Drag it out about yay big. Let's escape out of circle creation. We go back to a shaded mode. And now I can throw in a diameter dimension for this construction circle. And this one is going to be a diameter of 135. For the first hole, I want it to be located at a 45 degree angle. So let's create a construction line. That'll facilitate that. And snap in over here. Go about so big. Hit the escape key. Then we can dimension from here to this plane 45 degrees then I can create a point at the intersection of those two entities all right let's hit the check mark to get out of the sketch let me hit the P key to turn off my plane display let's create our hole and select that diameter 15 but the depth for this one I do not want it to be through I want it to have a blind depth and change that to a value of 50 and that looks good let's hit the check mark now we will do a circular pattern change from part to feature 
select this one whole and then for the axis I can pick this big bore and that way we have the different mounting holes let's hit the check mark and so that's all the geometry that I wanted to create let me scroll back in the tree and then let's unsuppress the extrude unsuppress that pattern and there we have the geometry of our engine block let me go to my section view and for the view plane let's select the plane right and hit the check mark and there we have our engine block I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindshield.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded thank you very much